you just start to your feet to honor our pastor. Amen.
had a wife by the name of Sarah, and the promise came through. The promise was given to Abraham that he would have a son that would bring forth a man of mighty nation that was supposed to come through Sarah. I mean, Sarah was about 90 years old, and she laughed within herself, or maybe out loud. Amen. And she said, how can this be? So she tried to, I guess, give a solution of her own. She gave her handmaiden to Abraham, and out of the handmaid came Ishmael. And out of Ishmael came the nation of the Ishmaelites. But the promise would not go forth through the Ishmaelites. Sometimes we try to do it ourselves, Mr. Chambers. When God told us it was worth what to do, we try to do something else to make it work, but it ain't going to work until we do it God's way. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. After Sarah had died, Abraham got him another wife by the name of Keturah. And she had a number of sons, one of them was named Medium. Out of Medium came the Medianites. But the promise was not through Keturah's son and the Medianites. The promise was to come through Sarah, through a man, her son, which out of him, Isaac, came the Israelites. And we see, amen, that the promise is being fulfilled through a young man by the name of Joseph. I believe Joseph was at this time 17 years old. And being 17, he was sold into slavery down into Egypt. Found out, amen, that Potiphar bought him. Potiphar, amen, was a man of might, a man of authority, and a man that served under Pharaoh's command. We see that he had a wife. Amen. And I, as I begin to study, amen, concerning his wife, I found out at one time she was considered, amen, one of the most virtuous women in that time. She was a virtuous woman in the fact, amen, that people acknowledged her, I believe. We see that people spoke of her, amen, in different books, different theologians. Not only did they speak of her, but they spoke also of Joseph. It is said in some of the studies that I looked at that Joseph was a beautiful and handsome man. He had a stature about him that when he walked in the room, you knew who he was. His skin was even toned, amen, and he was a handsome man. He was built, good God The Bible says that people wrote about him. Say that, I believe in the book of the Quran, hallelujah, about the 12th chapter, it said that his beauty was perfect, amen. Old traditions, amen, said that he looked good, said he was handsome. And because of this, uh, Potiphar's daughter, uh, Potiphar's wife, wanted him. She desired him. She looked good. She was beautiful. But the theologian said that when she seen Joseph, it had something come over her, and her desire took over her, and she wanted him so bad that every day she would say something to him, and he would walk by. He would give her a time of day. He wouldn't give a, a lie with her. He wouldn't uh, have a lunch with her. He done his master's work. Amen. Find out that her name was Zu, Zulikia. And Zulikia, being one of the most virtuous women, could not have Joseph, even though she wanted him day in and day out, he would not submit himself to her. We found out one day she went and she got out of dinner party. Somebody say dinner party. She invited about 40 of the most beautiful women of Egypt to come to the dinner party. When they come to the dinner party, they were sitting there eating. And the theologians wrote that when they looked up and saw Joseph come in the room, all of them said about the same time, that's not a man, that's an angel. He was so fine. <laughs> And to kill her, she wanted him so bad that he wouldn't submit himself.
God. Saints, I just want to say that to say this. Sometimes we need a zoo, a zoo, my God, a Zulikia in our life. As long as you ain't got nothing to tempt you, you know all right. But when something comes and tempts you, pulls you out of your comfort zone, lets you know that you weren't all you thought you were, and then you find yourself in a position, amen, of wantingness and needing God to help you. Sometimes, amen, we find ourselves, amen, in a position of being put in prison as Joseph was, falsely and wrongfully. But sometimes we find ourselves being put in prison because we've done something to deserve it. I can't get no help in that. Sometimes, amen, we go through trials and tribulations, amen, because God said, amen, I want to see if you can stand. But sometimes we go through because we have messed up and caused it to come upon ourselves. It's one thing to be in trouble, amen, because God will approve you. It's another thing to be in trouble because you got yourself on yourself in trouble. I can get no help with you. Some of us are coming out and some of us are living down some stuff right now, amen, that we cause to come upon ourselves. Yeah. 
inside and to stand what God is mighty men and mighty women in this dark and evil world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Somebody shout amen. 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 Hallelujah. We see that God, amen, equipped Joseph with something. Amen. They got the job done. And yet he remained faithful. Yes. It's one thing to get the job done. But it's another thing to remain faithful in doing the job. Amen. I'm here to let you know, amen, that God is still calling for according to his purpose. God needs somebody to get the job done and remain faithful. Yeah. It did not end with Joseph. And it's not going to end with the prophets. It's not going to end, amen, hallelujah, with the Testament, New Testament saints. And it's not going to end with us. After the end gone, God is still going to need somebody to get the job done and be faithful. What is it? That we should be faithful and because God has a purpose, amen, in your life. Not only in your life, but God has a purpose, amen, for the world. It is God's will to come back to the earth again and set up his kingdom, amen, his uh, will be on the mount, the holy, the holy temple is. In Jerusalem right now. Yes. And that's the plan of God. He's going to allow, allow us, hallelujah, to dwell in heavenly places. He's going to give us, amen, a new body, a new mind. Yes. Amen. He's going to give us, amen, a new outlook. Yes. We'll have crowns and rows. Yes. We'll have a hallelujah, a new outlook in what God wants us to do, what He wants us to be. We're going to go places that you never thought you could go. We're going to do things that you never thought you would do. The Bible says so. And if we shall, we shall worship God. And so we shall see Him as He is. We're going to be able to see Him as He is because we're going to be like Him. We're going to be like Him in the likeness of His view. We're going to be like Him like He was with His Father in the likeness of His glory. Somebody said this morning in the Sunday school lesson that we're Stop you with it. 
natural to the purpose that God called him to walk in. He had a flawless record of faithfulness and trust in God. And God gave, hallelujah, Joseph an unimpeachable character. You couldn't find nothing wrong in his life. You couldn't find anything in his life that would cause him to be put down in a dungeon. You need to learn something from him. 
I know you're over here, but you need to learn something from him. Hallelujah. Man, if I made a suggestion that we do something else now, try to help different ones because it don't take much, amen, to get something looking good, amen, and get something straight up. I heard, amen, hallelujah, different ones say, you need to learn something from him. You need to learn something from him. Amen. I'm glad somebody sees something in me that they can learn from me. And he said something about Joseph. And he put a little bit in Joseph's hand. Joseph was faithful. Uh -huh. He could put a little bit more in Joseph's hand. He could put everything in Joseph's hand. So can I, can I tell you this? If you walk according to the word of God, God got a particular purpose and a particular end for you. The Bible says, friend of a child when it is shook, though, that when it is old, it will not depart from you. That don't mean it's not... That don't mean that your child is going to stay in church and stay doing right in your house. No. He, he may go out there and mess up, but what you put in him is going to stay with him that when he gets out there, Mama said not to do this. I know I'm not here, but Mama told me not to do that. I ain't going to do that. They don't remember what to tell him. They told me not to. In that particular event, amen, that Joseph was in, God gave him prosperity. Whatever he put his hand to do, if he remained faithful, it would prosper. Yes, sir. Amen. So when he was in Potiphar's house, Potiphar put everything in Joseph's hand. Yes. To the point that the Bible said, the only thing Potiphar knew he had was the bread sitting in front of him. Amen. When he was in the prison, the same thing happened again. Uh -huh. The keeper of the prison put everything in Joseph's hand. Yes, yes. All of the guards that come in, when they're supposed to eat, what they're supposed to do, how they're supposed to dress, and he put them in Joseph's hand. He put everything, the times, the schedules, everything in Joseph's hand that he just sat back and done nothing. Anything that was supposed to be changed, you could not get it changed unless you went through Joseph. Yes, sir. Anything that was supposed to be or whatever, it would not. If the food menu changed, you may not change the food menu unless you go through Joseph. Joseph. In the prison. One day, somebody said one day. This. How you like me, Kobach? You like me? One day! Look, God Almighty, God sent two men. I need mean two men. You two men. God sent the butler and the baker, amen, into the ward, the same house that Joseph was out in. Yes. And as Joseph went out doing the business, one day he come in and he see that these boys were sad. I was sad.
Church has said in three days your head will be lifted up from off of you. Meaning that your job as the butler, head uh, head baker, will be removed. He said, Pharaoh is going to hang you on a tree in three days. And the bird is going to pick the skin off your body. In three days, Pharaoh's birthday came. And he said, I am going to lift up the head of my two servants. And he brought the butler and he brought the baker. He restored the butler back to his place. But the baker, he hung on a tree. And he died. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Joseph said, Mr. Butler, the only thing I request is that you remember me when you come into Pharaoh's presence. Remind him that I was stolen out of my land, the land of the Hebrews, and sold into slavery down here. Don't forget about two years went by. Somebody said two years. Sometimes it seems like God ain't going to ever come and see about you. Shout it again, two years. Sometimes you see everybody else getting blessed and you wonder when your shit going to come in. Somebody shout two years. Man with no leg, lick 
under a bush. Ain't got no place over his head. It's something when we complain because, amen, we don't have food or turkey or ham, amen, to put on the table. But I see people walking up and down the street all the time through Statesville. They don't even have a table, no food, or nothing to eat. Since it's something when we have forgotten the grace of God so much so that we can't show grace to somebody else. Amen. We think the little family feuds that we go through and the frivolous things amen, are a testament of how we're living and you shouldn't do this to me. But there are some people, amen, that don't have a family. Amen. Or the family has abandoned them. Have you I went to my mama's house. I was staying with her at the time. And when I went, I tried to shove my key in the door and turn it and it wouldn't work. I said, oh no, mama done throw me out. <laughs> That's a terrible feeling. When you know the one that brought you in this world now is putting you out. And you haven't done anything you deserve. If you've done not something to deserve it, that's a different story. Yes. But when you haven't done anything to deserve it, thank God, Sister Mary, I pulled my key out, stuck it in, and it worked. But just that little fear came upon me. A place that I've never been in before. A place without a shelter over my head. Oh, since you don't know how that feels unless you've been there. No place to go. No place to lay your head. I've never been without a place where I could not lay my head. I've never been without a place that I couldn't sit at my family member's table and eat. I've never been in a place. Oh, I didn't have clothes to put on my back. Shoes to put on my feet. Never been in a place where I couldn't walk in the back room and take a shower and clean myself. Shave myself. Groom myself. Never been in a place. Never been at a place. And when I felt that feeling come up over me, amen, just that one moment, it let me know how, how people really feel and how they are out there in the world and on the street. Joseph was now at a place of prominence. Because Pharaoh looked at his musicians, he looked at his suit sales. All the people that he called that could interpret the dream could. Joseph interpreted the dream, told him what he supposed to do. Joseph said, Who besides this man Joseph can I put over all of this business to take care of everything? And the musicians enjoyed the same of Pharaoh. Pharaoh enjoyed it. And now Pharaoh is taking off his ring. Come here, son. Putting it on Joseph. Letting everybody know in Egypt that there is no greater man in Egypt than Joseph. Right. Amen. Pharaoh Amen. puts the robes on Joseph, puts him in his chariots, and have him, amen, go through the streets. He had an entourage in front of Joseph saying, Bow down to me, bow down to me. Joseph is coming through. Besides Pharaoh over everything. Just a moment's time. Joseph. Look over to Potiphar, the one ever whose wife lied on him, I believe. He could have, amen, executed him on the spot. But he chose not to. He chose to forgive. Because he knew that God brought him for such a time as this. We see that Joseph executed, amen, everything that Pharaoh put in his hands. And told him, see, Joseph, I have put you over all of Egypt. There is none in Egypt that will do anything except to come through you. God is still doing the same and performing the same anointing in Joseph. The same thing that he did in Potiphar's house, the same thing that he did in the prison, he is now doing it. Over all of Israel. You, Joseph. There is nothing that should go on in Egypt.
future except they come through your name. And we see that the same thing happened. He was made the governor of Egypt. And we see, hallelujah. <laughs> and we see that one day, Joseph said, he's now about 39 years old. He sees his brothers come before him. And the, the dream that God gave him that his son, the 12 stars, would bow down before him. It was coming to pass. They bowed down before him in a matter of time. And we see and that his father came and his father bowed down before him. And we see and that all of his father's house and the man come and bow down before Joseph. And Joseph didn't execute judgment on them. But he said to his father, it is the God's doing so that, God, so that I can be the one that can preserve the life for all of Israel. Yes. And he told his father and his brother to go dwell in the land of Goshen. Yes. And Pharaoh and brought me out for such a time as this. God brought Joseph in my closing out of his comfort zone. Out of his father's house. Jesus. Secondly, he brought him out of the pit. A dead cistern that was thrown in so that they could have clean water. It was narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. He couldn't get out. His brothers heard him crying, but the Bible said there was no water in the system for him to drink. He was dying of thirst. God brought him out, sold him into Egypt. We see that God amen, allowed him to go to the Pharaoh's house and be put in a dungeon in the prison where Pharaoh's amen, enemy state. God brought him out of the dungeon. Next, God brought him out of sorrow because he was there with all of this power. But he did not have his family members around him. In the second, you have the power to bring, amen, your family members out, but they don't want to come out. He told them to come down. And Joseph revealed himself before his brother and he was no longer sorrowful. He seen his brother, his, his brother Benjamin, and he hugged Benjamin and wept with Benjamin. Not only that, God said, the Bible said rather, that Joseph made a request to the people of his family. He said, when and God is going to live deliver all of our people out of the land of Egypt. And when God, amen, performed this great exodus, I want you to dig my bones up and take my bones out of Egypt into the promised land. God's got a promised land. Hallelujah. I said, He's got a promised land. He's got a purpose, a promise, purpose in your life. God's got a place for you. It may seem like you're in a dungeon or in a pit right now. But there is a place for you. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, amen. As you remain sitting, I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for allowing this story to be written in the chronicles of the world. We thank you, Lord God, for this young man's life. We thank you for his faithfulness. We thank you for showing us his adaptability in certain situations, whether favorable or unfavorable. We thank you, Lord God, for his moral character and his moral standard. We thank you, Lord God, for showing us how we can stand in the face of adversity, even when we are falsely accused. Help us, Lord God, just to take this word and apply it to our life. We know that you're Lord God, Jesus, able that you oversee all things, and that your purpose, Lord God, in our life must be accomplished. If it is not accomplished, it is because we, Lord God, choose to go another path. Give us a mind to stray not to the left nor to the right. Help us, Lord God, to understand and know that you're with us all the time. 
that you will never leave us nor forsake us, even, Lord God, in the face of the storm, in the middle of the storm. Lord God, whatever we're going through, in sickness and in hell, you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. That even though we're going through hard times, there is somebody going through a worse of time than we are. Help us to have mercy and compassion on others. Even those that have done us wrong. As you forgive us, help us to forgive them. As you show mercy toward us, help us to show mercy toward others. As Lord God, you bless us. Help us to bless others. And we thank you. And we give your name to praise. Somebody shout amen. 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 And amen.